Hello, good morning. It's Phil Thatch, and I'm here today at Harrison Bay State Park. I've been driving around for, gosh, 30 or 45 minutes, and I thought today, you know, I've done a lot of landscape photography lately, and uh, I've, even though it's still nice fall color, as you may be able to see in this shot somewhere, I'm kind of in the mood to do something else. So I've decided to do some wildlife photography today, and I'm just driving around Harrison Bay State Park, which usually, you know, I can, if I, I'm here an hour, I can at least get three or four kind of uh, bird or deer or some kind of wildlife shots. Well, today, no good. So I'm starting off my video today at this dumpster because everything I've photographed so far has been garbage. I have seen a couple of um, Canada geese, which, I mean, even a good photograph of a Canada goose is kind of garbage. And uh, again, one of my favorite pictures so far has been a picture of a pine cone. But uh, anyway, I'm going to keep at it, and maybe at some point today, I'll find something good. Here is a Canada goose picture that really belongs in a dumpster. A garbage picture for sure, but things do slowly start to get better throughout the day. Here is a landscape photography picture. I switched over to the 100 to 500. I was going to take a picture of a maple tree, but it had too much junk in the background. But I did like this photo of the road coming into a parking area there at Harrison Bay State Park. And here is the photo of the pine cone that I said while I was standing by the dumpster. Could have been my favorite photograph of the day so far. And I kind of like this crow photo. Crows are hard to uh, photograph, and I managed to make this photograph turn out kind of okay. I'm back to the 800 f11 now. And here are some video clips that will end up causing me problems later. Here is a great blue heron out in Chickamauga Lake, and here is another crow. Well, things are continuing to not go well. I've uh, I left Harrison Bay State Park and I came here to Volkswagen Wetlands. Nothing going on. One thing cool did go on. I came in and as I was coming down to kind of where you park at Volkswagen Wetlands, I saw up on the hill on the right hand side of the road, a buck, a multi-pointed buck, white-tailed deer. And I said, well, that's awesome. So I parked and I was walking up the street and I looked out at my camera to make sure I had my settings right. And I was like, 1 60th of a second. Why am I, why am I set for 1 60th of a second? And so I bumped it up to 1 500th so I'd be ready and I was walking up the street and I was gonna to try to get to where I could look back that way and, uh, and see this buck. And when I did, I spooked another buck or possibly the same buck that had crossed the road, but it was right beside me and it jumped out of the, uh, of the brush on the other side of the road that I was expecting the deer to be at. And it kind of scampered up the road a little ways and then it stopped just before it left the road and looked back at me and I said, okay, I'm finally gonna get a good shot today. And I pointed the, uh, the 800 F11 at it and fired, and I was in video mode. So I have a, a video clip and it was, it was, it would have been kind of a nice video clip, except for I was all over the place. I'm like, why am I shooting video? Um, but now I know why I was at 1 60th of a second because my camera was in video mode and 1 60th of a second is where you wanna be for video mode. And so uh, the video clip's not good, and it, you know it just lasted just an instant, uh, and then it scampered off. But I would have, if I had been in photo mode, I would have gotten a good shot of that deer. So the struggles continue. I'm gonna show you that clip three times. Here's the deer. Wouldn't that have been a great time to make a photo? And I didn't even hold the camera steady during the video clip because I was wondering why the camera wasn't firing. Why won't my camera fire? And anyway, it would have been a nice shot except for that pink behind the deer's well, head. it's supposed to storm later today, and I think maybe that's why I'm having trouble finding birds to photograph. So I've decided to go for some low-hanging fruit, and that is great blue heron here at the Chickamauga Dam. One of my favorite places to come and photograph. I used to come here when I first got a, a decent camera. I had a Nikon D7000 and a really inexpensive 55 to 300, and I did a lot of photography here. And here it is more than a decade later, and I'm still working here. This first great blue heron shot is from a long, long way away. This is on one of the concrete pilings that's below the railroad bridge that's near the Chickamauga Dam. Well, I set up right here. There's a concrete path, and the part I'm on is getting splashed on by waves. And I set up right here, right at the very end of the concrete path, 
and started making photographs of that great blue heron that's right there. I, I think you may be able to see it in the frame. It's just, there's a little tree bush on the side of the river and right beside it and slightly behind it is a heron. And I started sitting right here where, uh, where the camera is on this rock and I would take a few shots, scoot a little closer and I ended up getting all the way to minimum focus distance on this 800 F11, which is kind of a long way, but, I, and, and I think I can, you can actually shoot a little bit closer than it's rated minimum focus distance. Anyway, and I just made lots and lots of photographs of this patient great blue heron. Now, if I had skipped over there quickly, it would have left, but if you just ease up on these great blue heron, especially right here along the, the riprap on the side of the river, just downstream from the Chickamauga Dam, these birds are used to, to people fishing right here. So they don't, they don't scamper off really quick, which is good. Uh, and sometimes if the, if the fishermen catch a fish that they don't want, like a shad or something like that, they'll toss it over and the, and the birds will eat it. So these are, uh, these are wild birds, but they're semi-tame. And you can just get some really interesting, detailed, uh, close-up headshots of the great blue heron. And I'll share those with you now. Look at that beautiful great blue heron. I love the beautiful eyes and all the colors in their feathers. Just a fantastic looking bird to make close up photos of. And I was really impressed with how the 800 F11 did in this situation. Here is another shot. I, I picked my three favorites. I worked on these for about 13 or 14 minutes and I picked my three favorite shots. The first one that I showed you was my very favorite and this is my favorite with it facing another direction. And then I picked this one because these great blue heron look so derpy when you can see both of their eyes because they're kind of looking in two directions it almost seems like. And while I was working on those shots, I had my little ZFC camera that I'm using to vlog in this video. I had it making a 4K clip pointing at the dam. And it's like 13 and a half minutes worth of video that you're watching right now. And I've increased its speed 32 times. So now I've made it into a 4K time lapse there at the Chickamauga Dam. I thought it turned out pretty cool. And before I left, I decided to make a photograph. Someone did a really nice job stacking these rocks there on the concrete path. I'm glad I didn't trip over them and knock them down because somebody did a really nice job. Okay, so now I've come down here uh, just a little ways down the river, Tennessee River Park from the Chickamauga Dam. You know, the, the the river park is a, it's a concrete path that goes all the way from the Chickamauga Dam all the way right alongside the river to downtown Chattanooga and beyond. So it's really an awesome park that Chattanooga puts on for its citizens and visitors love to come here. And this particular area is right behind Chattanooga State. Chattanooga State Community College is right there. I mean, there, there's a fence and on the other side of that is the campus of the Chattanooga State Technical Community College. And right down there is the Tennessee River. And uh, it's got the rocks, the riprap, just like directly below the Chickamauga Dam has. But in addition to that, it also has trees growing up out of the rocks and that attracts birds. So I came down here, you know, I've been struggling all day. I had the easy shots of the great blue heron, which I don't know, in some other parts of the world, great blue heron might be a little bit more difficult to photograph, but right here uh, near the Chickamauga Dam, they're, they're pretty easy. So uh, I use that to kind of kickstart my photography today after struggling. But uh, I came on down here to the area behind Chattanooga State and the very beginning of it, there's a, there's a boat ramp and then the wooded area starts. And I had some pretty good luck right there for a minute. I got a, a mockingbird, I think I got a cardinal, um, a Carolina wren, and then I came down a little further and I saw a downy woodpecker, a, a male, I got some pictures of it. I don't think any of those are any good, but anyway, I'm continuing my struggling day here along now at the Tennessee River Park behind Chattanooga State. Here is a male northern cardinal. Beautiful, beautiful bird. I love to photograph these. This one's got a couple of branches in front of it that I'm not all that fond of, but otherwise really happy with the shot. This is a northern mockingbird. Now this shot has not been cropped at all and I uh, did clip its tail just a little bit. I should have backed up a step. Here is a female Northern Cardinal. The males are solid red and the females are this color pattern. 
and I love all of the col colorful leaves in the background of this shot. Here's another Northern Mockingbird, 6400 ISO for this shot. Just a beautiful, beautiful example of a Northern Mockingbird there near Chattanooga State. This is a Carolina Wren, the super cute and extremely noisy bird, the Carolina Wren. And it uh, was hopping around there for a while behind Chattanooga State, so I made that photograph. And here's another photograph, I believe, of the same Carolina Wren. This one's another 6400 ISO shot. I like the light on this heavily cropped photo. If you've watched this channel for any time at all, you know I'm definitely not too proud to photograph a squirrel while I'm out working on wildlife. And I was coming down the river walk here, kind of a beautiful little path, and I remembered years ago, probably using a D800 and a 500 F4 and a teleconverter, I made a photograph of a chipmunk on this wall that's covered with moss. And just as I was thinking about it, I looked, I looked over and uh, right about where my camera is now, there was a squirrel right there. And uh, I kind of eased on down and leaned up against the wall with one elbow and braced up. And it's really dark over here. Um, and I made a few photographs of a squirrel. Had to go all the way down to 1 250th of a second with this F11 lens to, uh, to get the shot. And there's also some fall color. You can see some leaves that have fallen here on top of the mossy wall. And so here comes a squirrel photo. In this first shot, our squirrel model is just acting like a squirrel, just kind of on all fours as a squirrel will do. But in the next photograph, the squirrel looks like it's posing for us. It's got its little hands tucked into its chest. Very cute animal. I uh, always enjoy photographing squirrels, even though they are far from exotic. Now this next photo, I think it's the same squirrel, but it had gotten down off the wall and gotten back up on the wall. And I was much closer for this one. This photo has not been cropped at all. Well, I got hungry. So uh, stopped at a drive-thru, got some lunch for Heather and I and came home and ate. And I'm um, still I'm pretty tired, I'm gonna call it a day. But man, what a struggle. What a struggle it was today. And, and uh, I think I finally ended up getting some pictures. You know, the, the great blue hair and stuff is easy, but uh, I always enjoy it. And the, and the photos always come out beautiful if you go to the dam and, and work on the great blue hair. And, and uh, hopefully, hopefully you like those. And uh, maybe you like the content enough to give a thumbs up. Very much appreciate it if so. And uh, whew, I'm tired after a long day of struggling to do wildlife photography. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a bunch. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.